welcome to another edition of Mr. Nice Guy. I'm Ben Slowey, and I am joined this afternoon uh, on this very beautiful sunny day uh, by uh, two filmmakers, uh, co-founders of uh, Bullhorn Films. Um, they have been uh, documenting uh, the People's Revolution, um, the, the grassroots organization that is uh, fighting for justice for the families um, uh, of victims of police brutality. Um, they're doing wonderful work out here, and I'm very excited to talk to them about their projects, their organizing, and uh, why they do what they do. So, Sean, Maddie, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. You're super welcome. How, how are you guys doing today? Oh, we're doing fantastic. We yeah, spring day. is around the corner here. The People's Revolution has been marching, I think, now for 294 days, if that sounds right. Yeah. Um, or not marching, but doing some sort of action. So we're actually approaching a year here very, very quickly. Yeah, isn't that that is just astounding. I mean, it's it's so wonderful, like almost 300 days uh, to start. What, what are you guys done today so far? Oh, you know, <laughs> funny you ask. We're actually working on another project right now, too. We were doing some scouting around town. So we were driving around Milwaukee trying to find some locations for a uh, narrative film that we're working on right now. So Bullhorn Films is also taking on another project. It's going to be um, Cleo Coleman's book, Time and Place, The Life of B and K. Um, we met uh, Cleo Coleman uh, through marching with TPR, and uh, we got really close. And he liked the kind of work that we were doing. And um, we we're close enough where he felt that he could have a bond with us. And that's what we were doing this morning. We we're driving around town, find, finding locations to present to Cleo um, for the film to see if he'd be interested in us. Oh, yeah. I, I did just see uh, your post about that um, on your Facebook page. So shout out to Khalil for sure. Um, I, uh, let's see. Um, been a very busy Friday been a very busy week uh lots of podcasts lots of uh I cover the music scene so uh, a lot of people are dropping uh a lot of people are you know making sense of the, this really chaotic world right now but uh I'm excited for the uh mid coast show tonight yeah uh, um yeah, uh, have uh, you folks uh, tuned in um, in the past? This is going to be my first time actually getting to be there. Uh, yeah, we've caught bits and pieces, but we are friends with a couple of people who run it and they do an awesome job. And um, we are very lucky to be on next month's show as the recipients of the um, Donation. So we're, yeah, we're really excited. Shout out to uh, Rocky and Remy for that. Yeah, yeah, big fans. Big shout out to Rocky and Remy. Remy. Uh, they're, I was just with Rocky earlier, actually. Uh, she so kindly took me to take my COVID test at Walgreens earlier. Um, and then we got interval afterwards. Yes, uh, big, big love to Rocky. Um, we, we met through organizing this past year and she's become one of my dear friends. And I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity for us as breaking and entering uh, to actually partner up with uh, Mid Coast. Um, uh, we have like a, a trade deal going on now and uh, you know, it's important. We can't enjoy local music if you know, we're not standing for justice at the same time. So um, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm very proud and excited for working together in the future. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's remarkable. Yeah. Uh, so what we talk about in Mr. Nice Guy, we talk love and fear, passion and creativity. And so um, this is my first time like actually getting to like talk to both of you. Um, but um, I, I, uh, I organized with the Party for Socialism and Liberation, uh, the PSL, um, and we've... Uh, we partaken in, in a number of uh, uh, people's revolution uh, demonstrations over the past year. And um, I've met really wonderful comrades, heroes, friends, uh, just um, I'm mesmerized every day by the work y'all are doing. So yeah, I guess to start. Um, so Sean, Maddie, uh, where are you folks originally from? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Whitefish Bay just 15 minutes north from here. Um, yeah, you know, typical, typical story. Um, came to Milwaukee for 
college. I went to Myad uh, and have lived here ever since. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm from New London, Wisconsin, I'm about closer to Green Bay, Fox Valley area, about two hours north of here. Um, how I got to Milwaukee was I was traveling through the city and I wanted to stop by and check out the Student Film Festival. This is uh, 22 years ago or something, and I was really intrigued by the films that the students were making there. And I think uh, that night I, I decided I wanted to move to Milwaukee um, and be a student, a film student and study film. So I've spent about the last 20 years here, uh, lived in Hawaii for about three years, but most of the time I've been here and I love Milwaukee. I can't find my, I can't find a better place and I love it more and more, especially when you meet communities like the People's Revolution and all the love in the city. Uh, I, I feel like there's nothing like it. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I, I'm actually from the suburbs of Chicago. Um, so I'm from Illinois and I came up here seven years ago for UWM as well. Um, Graduated in journalism, and uh, I took a couple film classes, but the UWM film department's very uh, intense. Um, it's it's wonderful. Uh, I I like it's very abstract and it's beautiful, but definitely um, I uh, yeah it it it, uh, it weeded me out pretty fast. That being said, um, I'm interested in kind of how you you both, I guess, sort of first sparked interest in film. Uh, funny story. So I just started filming. Well, yeah, I'll say I just started filming during the protest. Oh, sure. uh, so back in May last year, um, I'm actually a painter. So I never, you know, left the that world until the protest came about and I've I thought I could sort of um be an extra set of hands and an extra lens to Sean um yeah so really really recently um but I've always been in the art world I actually um work at the green gallery which is a conceptual art gallery here in town and um this was just like another avenue for me. Sure. Well, that being said, um, well, that's great. Um, that's awesome. Uh, were you like um, an artist uh, from like a young age? Like was art always, like did it begin as a creative outlet since you were a kid basically? Yep, absolutely. You know, drawing and coloring and painting, all that stuff at a very young age, like nonstop. I think my parents still have like a huge bin of my work. <laughs> um, but yeah. then, yeah, it's just always been a constant in my life. And um, yeah, as I mentioned, I went to my ad, so it's been yeah. my world. Yeah, you were the cool kid when you had the, the big box of Crayola. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what were, I guess, what were your uh, takeaways from my ad? <laughs> Um, I loved the attention we received from our teachers. Um, the class sizes were super small. Um, and a lot of our teachers were also working artists. So we got sort of, um, you know, an extra layer there. And I think it, like, you know, just hearing other friends experiences at different art schools, like critiques were tough. Like, mm -hmm. They did not sugarcoat things, which I found super helpful. And um, it prepared us, I think, really well for what came after, which, sure. you know, we're still working on. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah, for sure. Um, did you, uh, did you, so did you like start, the, start working with the gallery, like out of school or, uh, yeah, I guess. I started actually um, interning there as a junior and um, once I graduated, they offered me a position. So I got really lucky there. Wonderful, awesome, great. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, so Sean, uh, so you're, you're like, you've been doing films for a while, is my understanding. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, not as a child or anything. I, my parents never had like a video camera. Um, but I was the kid at school, if the teacher said that, hey, who wants to do the video camera. I was a guy who didn't know how it worked, but I was very, very intrigued by 
uh, the possibilities with the camera. So uh, yeah, I, I went to film, when I came to film school, it was probably about the year 2000. And um, I felt like I was way behind because there's a lot of students that had media things, but I, I, but I wasn't afraid. I knew I still wanted to keep playing around with film. And yeah, I've been doing it for about 20 years. Yeah. Damn, that's, that's awesome. Um, what do you feel like first um, kind of sparked your interest in that form of expression and storytelling? Hmm. <laughs> be probably an avid film lover. Um, I don't think there's a lot of career paths I was very interested in. So um, I, I just knew that if there was a way that I could at least sustain myself in making films, I think that was going to be, how, however, I was going to be able to figure that out. Um, that was the way. But yeah. um, I just always in, intrigued by the visual medium, though, and storytelling. Storytelling's a big thing. Yeah, oh, most definitely, especially right now. I never really thought, I don't think we ever thought that we were going to be documentary filmmakers, especially, you know, early on when we first started dating eight, nine years ago, I don't think we ever even watched documentaries. It just evolved. Yeah, I, I feel that totally. Like, I never really gravitated towards documentaries a ton until I started becoming more like, just looking for more deeper meanings through through film rather than mere interpretations um just like um especially pertaining to social issues for sure um yeah like i watched a lot of documentaries this past year for sure um so how did you you two meet um we were in an art show together actually <laughs> very long time ago um a couple of friends and i put on something back Ooh, what was it called? I don't remember anymore. An old gallery space um, in the Fifth Ward. And Sean was a friend of a friend and we invited him um, to participate. And he had some photos in the show and I had some paintings in the show. And the rest is history. <laughs> well put. <laughs> All right. Well, wonderful. So that was about a, what you said, a decade ago? It's yeah. probably approaching that, almost. I think so. And yeah, yep. we've been married for about four years now, but uh, I think we've been probably dating for almost a decade. Wonderful, awesome, great. We love a creative couple, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow we get along doing it too. I, I know that doesn't always happen, but somehow we do it. Sometimes, <laughs> Sometimes we do, I'll stop it. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, no, it's awesome when you can collab. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Prior to like pre-COVID, uh, like prior to um, the uprisings last summer uh, that started on is uh, May twenty eighth, I believe. Yeah, um, were you were were you two like um, active in like uh, community organizing and marches like previously? Like, uh, were you doing much of that? No. No, I'd say we, we're always uh, politically active in the sense that we're viewing what's going on. Like we had listened to Vaughn May's podcast for a long time. I mean, it kind of informed us what was going on. Oh, sorry, it's yeah, it Facebook Live. And it kind of informed us what was always going on in the community that maybe we weren't hearing the news. So we were avid listeners, but like, um, I don't think we ever necessarily thought it was our part of, to be participants. But we did get out there day one. And, you know, I, I don't even remember where we heard about the first meeting. Uh, and the undisclosed location or whatever. And I think it might've been Vaughn Mays, but we came down there and checked that out. Or this guy came down there and checked that out and the, the watch the marches start. And they're like, this, this could be big and this could really last a long time. But I don't think that we even like had any intention of making a film. Like, it's just that uh, I kind of always have a camera in my hand and Maddie uh, likes to play around with the camera a little bit too when it's out there. And by maybe about day 13, 14, and they're just like, you know, mentioned it to one activist. I was like, do you want us to like keep documenting this thing? And this would be pretty historical. It seems like we might be going on for a long ways. And they're like, sure. Mm -hmm. That was Khalil Coleman. Khalil Coleman was like, sure, do it. But then he is really beautiful how he did it though. He was just like, okay, I got three people for you to talk today. Don't talk to me. It's really about learning who's out here and what their story is and why they're out here. Um, so he like for just kind of going on, he's to be like, Sean, today, Sean and Madeline, today, there's this person, this person, that person, I want you to talk to them. I want you to hear their stories, hear why that is that they're marching. And I thought that was a beautiful approach to it. Um, and um, so, yeah, it was it was telling the story that he wanted us to tell and, and hear. 
And we just kept doing that. And we just kept doing that more and more. And we kept finding um, our own, uh, as we became closer and closer with the marchers, we kind of started finding other things organically on our own and things evolved with uh, TPR. And TPR has evolved a lot, but we're trying to be there as much as possible. These cold months, uh, they've switched their thing up. Um, whereas protesting, 2020 was the year of the protest. 2021, um, they began doing a lot of lit drops, just kind of trying to educate the um, community. As mostly here in Milwaukee, uh, just going the door to door, hand somebody some lit, letting you know this is what's going on. If you want to talk about it, or learn a little bit more about it, um, let's have that conversation. So, yeah, I think uh, TPR is always evolving anyway. That's wonderful. That's awesome. Like how you were, um, how you essentially were able to, yeah, just like develop a personal interaction with uh, everyone marching and everyone part of the revolutionary family. I mean, that's that's massive in not only building trust, but also the fact that everyone has a different story. Everyone has a different experience with white supremacy and oppression. And mm-hmm. it's, it's truly eye-opening. Um, so, um, so was Bullhorn Films, is that like, was that birthed out of this past year? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Sure. You we made that? it sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We actually um, were able to secure fiscal sponsorship through Milwaukee Film to help um, you know give people tax credit when they give to our documentary. Um, and in order to do that, we needed like an LLC. We needed you know all the uh, professional things that one needs to acquire that, and um, it just sort of all happen naturally, organically, and then that is how we are here today with you as Bullhorn Films. Yeah, and I have to give like, huge props to Maddie for all that. I mean, at this time when we created it, uh, we were still marching almost every day, you know, filming, Maddie's out there filming, I'm filming, and then uh, I'm editing at nighttime just trying to get some of the message out. And then somehow, I don't know where Madeline fit it all in, but she somehow created this LLC. Um, and doing a lot of different things and I, I, whatever she's doing i don't know when she's doing it but she's still doing that and um it's busy work here at bullhorn films hmm. certainly yeah yeah um no kidding for sure um there's a lot of work to do bullhorn so uh where'd you come up with bullhorn films yeah that was um that was uh well i think that was a madeline schweitzer uh uh name right there i think you know um we were trying to come up with a name for a little while and uh, i think you just proposed that one night we were around the blow horns all the time and then bullhorn just kind of popped up and um so yeah sorry to interrupt, no please do but in we in tpr we have these circles at the beginning and end of each march um or event of the day and that would be a time for people to speak their truths and, um, you know, in some cases tell their stories, yeah. in some cases just, you know, speak on how they're feeling. And um, so we, we sort of like the idea of the bullhorn as sort of um, an elevator, right? Like you're elevating one's voice, lifting them up the same way um, we hope the film, you know, does as well. Yeah, for sure. That, that's I like that um, that symbolism a lot, you know. Uh, and it certainly comes with the territory. Uh, lots of um, megaphones, aka bull, bull horns, for sure. But uh, you know, it's all part of uh, getting uh, our voices heard and the people seen. Um, what was um, so once you started going out there and like documenting? Um, I know you said Khalil like would direct you to like talking to different people and when so yeah I guess how did you kind of find your footing with like how like you know you were structuring like what you were filming and stuff like that like how did how did you kind of find uh, your place if you will with it yeah well, I think it's different things different days I, I think a lot of the complaints early on were um, news media would be, be there they'd be marching alongside and um they would report a story at nighttime and be completely different from what we saw what happened and really frustrate a lot of the protesters. Uh, the People's Revolution is a very peaceful, very, very peaceful group. And um, what would be reported, the news media is um, 
you know, it'd be like mostly no violence or no destruction day or something along that line. And like, it's really bothered a lot of people. So I think initially we kind of did, it's like, hey, no, this is what's really going on. And we want to present that uh, image and message to people, kind of get the truth out there. Um, and I'd say that's what started it. And then other things kind of just evolved. You want to say, add anything to that? Yeah, well, I, I get in trouble because I film everything like the entire time. Sean's yeah. like, we need like 10 new hard drives because of all this footage <laughs> we have. Um, but I just, I really want to capture it all because I find it so magical and you never know what's going to pop back up and be relevant. Like we've got, we've had lots of occasions where I'm like, thank God I was filming just at that random moment or, you know, people will come to us and say like, did you get like this that day? We want to see if that person was there or we want, you know, they might use our footage in different capacities to help them and we try to really give back to uh the organizations that we work with yeah so um my strategy is to film everything <laughs> <laughs> film everything yep that's true and, and it's true that i do say hey, let's back up a little bit um <laughs> i'm the editor here <laughs> like yeah. you're giving me a lot of footage but um but it is as maddie said there's been so many moments where i would have maybe counsel not necessarily filming but um she she films the gems and uh mostly over the winter time while i'm working maddie is out there uh doing a lot of the filming but um and that also goes out to a plug we um i have our hard drives completely <laughs> completely maxed out if yeah. anybody wants to donate to a hard drive for bullhorn films please go to bullhornfilms.com go to the donate page and help us fund more for our archives obviously seen some really emotional, visceral, and, uh, you know, uh, to be quite frank, some pretty disturbing shit in the last year that the world needs to be paying attention to. And that actually segues into what, like, when I was specifically when I was referring to the Tosa marches that I saw, I watched, Sean, the video you took of, um, uh, the, the pigs literally jumping on top of and ripping my friend off of their bike. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend of which is still uh, dealing with uh, the uh, reaper, the legal repercussions to this day um, mm -hmm. uh, from that incident and, and, you know, having to help them like with getting out of jail smoothly, like that week was, it was, it was a really, really rough week uh, for us in the PSL. None of us want to watch a video like that, but we have to, you know, like, it's like, we, we can't ignore it. Like, this is what's like, they're little, cause like y'all were just literally walking through a neighborhood, like not causing any trouble. And uh, they just charged, they just like ambushed you. Like ch they charged at you pretty much. like. Yeah, that was yeah. It was it was a it was haunting. Yeah, it was it was hard to watch, and uh, you know, still kind of gives me the chills thinking about it. Um, recalling it, I didn't really know the person super well. I had, you know, I'd been around that person who got uh, jumped essentially and, and brutalized, but um, it just like the shock of it, just like the way that he was attacked was like I've never seen a bully do that to another person on the playground. It was just like. And of course they said he's resisting arrest. And of course they do that every time, right? We know there's gonna always say he's resisting arrest. He wasn't resisting arrest for shit. And um, they felt that they had a taser. I can't remember how many times he was tased, but hearing that ta that sound of the taser and then him, that vo his voice after that, eh, why? I just don't get it. Like, why was that so necessary? Like, I, and that's part of the thing. It's not a new thing for us, but a big part of our passion for this is why police treat thing people the way that they do. Why do they want to be the bullies on the playground and hurt people as much as they possibly can? And they were meant, they meant to hurt him that day. Yeah. They really meant to hurt him. And they did. And like, yeah. not only physically, but now they're going to hurt his record. And um, uh, for, you know, for the rest of his life, uh, some of the things that they claim that he did uh, might be on his record. And I don't know what, what he's all uh, maybe being charged mm -hmm. with, but he literally mentally, was just, I'm sure. and mentally, yeah. I mean, he's going to be traumatized for the rest of his life because he was riding a bicycle. And he, no was, harm. and he was also a safety marshal. So he was making sure other people weren't getting hurt. 
yeah. um, and he was penalized for that. And uh, yeah, like you said, for what? Like these these fucking these class traders, nothing more than bullies that are allowed to get away with their uh, violence and their brutality and uh, inflicting trauma on innocent people be, and they get away with it because of qualified immune eh, qualified immunity um like and you know the shocker with that is is like you know i feel like over half this country doesn't even know what qualified immunity is no, no not yeah you know and I think that's what, you know, I, I witness when people are doing these lit drops or we're witnessing when people are doing lit drops, like they have no idea what a qualified immunity is. It's like, it's, it's like a, you're free to do whatever you want if you're a police officer. And why do we still have that? I mean, that seems like pretty archaic to me. And they know that. And the law enforcement knows that when they're going out there, they can hurt somebody and nothing, nothing's going to happen to them. Yeah. And the rules play out so much in their favor with you know, right now, like uh, what's going on with SB 119 and talking about uh, like how, like I wanna, I wanna commend uh, Mimi, like shout out yeah. to Mimi for <laughs> voicing a concern over banning, like why we need to ban chokeholds completely because this whole, the whole fallacy of self-defense we see time and time again, that gets manipulated, the loopholes, the, the way that that can be like bended so much to the officer's favor like we've seen it and it's murdered people yeah and does anybody else like ever need to use these these chokeholds i guess don't think it's necessary i'm not sure the military even uses chokeholds like this right. just, um mixed mar martial arts uh fighting don't that doesn't use chokeholds like this why right you're not they're not being trained to do it then it should not be legal mm -hmm. yeah yeah. And if you can get away with it and you're not going to get in trouble for it, I think a lot of times they see like, well, why not? Of course I'm going to do it. Yeah. Right. Because, because they can, they, they're, they're granted that power to use lethal tactics like that. Um, yeah. That's you know, no, yeah. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say like, that's, that's why Dontre Hamilton was murdered too. Mm -hmm. um, for, for no fucking reason. Mm -hmm. He was approached and frisked and like and accosted for no fucking reason. Um, yeah. What were you gonna say, Sean? Oh, it's a different point. But to go off what you're saying with Dr. Hamilton, you know, that's always a point that I feel like sometimes doesn't always get addressed all the time too. That you know what, you know, how that started was um, that was uh, maybe a barista over at Starbucks that called in uh, Dr. Hamilton at the park sleeping, and we have to be as citizens, we have to be aware when it's necessary to call the cops. And when it's not necessary to call the police, and I've been in, I've lived in plenty of neighborhoods where people call the police over absolutely ridiculous things, uh, suspicious, always suspicious characters. If they're not used to somebody walking around their neighborhood, uh, usually um, a minority walking around the neighborhood, that's too common. And why are we doing that? I think we definitely see that in the suburbs. We need to stop calling the police on things unless we absolutely need to. And what are those emergency emergency things? But calling it on, on Dr. Hamilton um, chilling out on a bench. Right. Come on. And then turning that into a mental health issue, um, which is really fucking insulting to people that struggle with mental health issues. None of us deserve to die over that. Uh, no. So you, you were all, you also came down to Kenosha also uh, following Jacob Blake. Um, I was yeah, there right away that night. That night? Yeah, we came down that night, um, at, you know, right after it happened. Um, it was a very chilling night. The, the people of Kenosha were angry. And um, witnessing the passion and the marching and the concern from the community is uh, what we were there to support. And uh, we came down there and we drove with TPR down there. And then that's what it was there for. They were there to show support and uh, for the family that night. It was really sad. And I think um, a lot of what happened in Kenosha is also taken out of context a lot with the media. But um, the, the citizens, the people of Kenosha, they're out there because they had a concern. They did not want to see... Was it Shusky? Is that his name? Shusky? Rustin Shusky? Shooting somebody in the back? Like, what the heck was that? Um, yeah. yeah. And, we, and then we have publications like uh, commending this guy for it. Like, oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck Jessica McBride. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> fuck oh. Wisconsin right now. I had her as a professor when I was at UWM, actually. 
Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you look at things differently retrospectively now. Yeah, I was I was there the night after, um, which was the second night, which was the night before Kyle Rittenhouse murdered two people and maimed a third. Um, and yeah, that was that was a night I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Like, because I, you know, I like I was definitely out in the uprisings, you know, in June. Um, for the couple weeks, like I was out in the streets, you know, but I was all the marches I was at least part of were very peaceful. Like there weren't really any confrontations with um, with the police. Like it was, you know, definitely like, especially at night, like people like, you know, the there's definitely tensions raised between the people and the pigs for sure. But I never experienced any, I never witnessed any tear gas or violence until that night. And uh, it was psychological warfare, man. Mm-hmm. Those, those, yeah. Same. yeah those L rads like like what like why why are you why do you want to induce like trauma responses in people um, yeah. like who care who like as you said are concerned yeah totally I know like watching some of the footage going back to Kenosha it's just like watching some of the protesters in Kenosha going down their hands and knees and putting their hands up in a you know in an act of um or in the display of I want to try to say performance and then getting tear gas if we're doing the most peaceful possible thing is just shocking to me not to mention them being like 30 40 feet away from a uh, law enforcement and just getting you know rubber bolts uh, you know hitting them and uh, what do you call those canisters that blow what do you call those flash flash grenades or something oh like yeah, that. yeah 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 I don't know what all these ridiculous like uh, militarized uh, weapons that they use on protesters but silly Wearing what the three of us are wearing right now, you know, just street clothes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so as it got colder, um, so that's when like the, uh, a lot of the marches turn more into like caravans and that kind of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, I'd love to hear, yeah, just since, you know, we're kind of coming up on the end of winter now, just uh, what do you have to say about the work that was done in the colder months and uh, the, the, hmm actions TPR was involved with. I know y'all spend a lot of time out like um, in COSA and whatnot. Yeah, like what uh, What do you have to say about the last couple months? You probably uh, need best to speak about yeah. that. Maddie's really been the one who's been out there filming that um, for the season so, in the winter. By the way, before you start to, so to clarify, Maddie, you're, you're more of like, uh, like you do more of the physical filming and Sean edits more. Is that my yeah. understanding? Correct. Yeah. Nowadays. Well, nowadays, yeah. Um, I still film, but um, yeah, just whenever I can right now. But Man- Maddie's the main shooter right now. Sure. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah, Maddie, uh, as you were gonna say. So numbers have definitely dwindled. So yeah, the car caravan was a good option because people would show up for that. Um, in conjunction with these lit drops, is what we're calling them. Um which are really great, as Sean mentioned. Uh, It's still a way to represent the group, the demands the group has, and the calls to action um, with less people, right? And we're also not making as many people upset that we're blocking the roadways and stuff like that. So it's it's been um, positive. We've, we, our house has been lit drop before which we found to be like so cool yeah we were flattered we, yeah like right. we went through them we ran through the whole thing like oh yeah 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 the one day we <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. um but yeah it's been really good i think um to rally the community there's still a lot of people that just are not going to show up but they can look at this piece of paper read about this injustice um, and then there's a call to action so they can contact um, their alder, their senator, uh, whatever official is on that particular piece of lit. Um, and it's been going really well. And, um, you know, there's been good reception from the people who, um, you know, receive the lit if they choose to um, communicate yeah. with the protesters. Uh, so that's been good. As I, did mention numbers are definitely dwindling. Um, but I think as it's warming up, we're gonna hopefully, 
you know, bring the crowds back out. Yeah. I will say filming lit drops is not as exciting as filming marches. Um, <laughs> not the most cinematic. Maybe. It's not the right, but it's yeah. still super important and effective. So I, I hope they continue that, but I also hope to bring back or be a part of them bringing back you know the numbers for these marches as well i think we're seeing it a little bit some of these weekends um, i sometimes get out on the weekends and um seeing the numbers come back on these nice sunny days uh, it's like it's a beautiful sight to see it and that's kind of part of part of the reason that we changed the name of our film to won't stop is because they're not going to stop tpr is not going to stop they they there's no i've heard any conversation of anybody want to slow down anytime soon they're going to keep on going a lot of organizers have accepted that you know, we're going to be fighting some kind of revolution for the rest of our lives. You know, we've accepted that and we're committing our lives to it. And uh, at this point, it's like, you know, once you like, and it's like, how could you not, you know, when you see all the atrocities and injustices and, uh, you know, just heinous disregards for for human life, uh, violation of rights, like, I mean, you can't, you can't turn a blind eye to that. Like in, oh. in good faith, you can't. So, um, and everyone has their own way of contributing for sure. You know, like everyone has their own way of uh, helping fight. And, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, this week, uh, what are, what's TPR up to? Um, this week. Well, they early on a few days ago, you know, we had the awful incident, um, uh, the shooting in Atlanta. So they showed some support for um, the Asian American Pacific Islanders uh, 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 rally down at City Hall the other day, and just there, just to watch and just support and uh, and view and, and show solidarity. And um, I think there was more lit drops. There's lit drop tonight. Um, I'm not super sure about the weekend. I do know that some important uh, trial dates are coming up. Um, so that's going to mm -hmm. be something, you know, to look forward to. Yeah. And um, yeah, some of those things we can't divulge probably too much information on. For sure, for sure. I get that. Uh, yeah. There's also yeah. going to be a really awesome, um, uh, like, civics lesson that TPR is presenting. So keep an eye out for that. There's going to be um, like a special guest helping us as well. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Um, yeah. Uh, I, the last time I managed, I could, I made it out uh, with TPR was uh, um, the day of the uh, uh, Mattioli uh, hearing, um, which was mm -hmm. almost two weeks ago now. Um, but yeah, like, like what you said, Sean, like uh, it was like, that was the first day where it was like over 50 degrees and like it was it was very comfortable very glorious to be outside um without as many layers and mm -hmm. great to see you know all the comrades out um and hearing everyone speak that day um i remember something that uh p said shout out big shout out to p mm -hmm. um, yeah. he's incredible yeah, he's He's the man, but when he spoke, I mean, there's something that he said that has I've been thinking about the past two weeks, and I'll probably think about it, you know, like from now on when I'm thinking about what I do, like applying what like what you do, like in relation, because like in in relation to Milwaukee itself, like what he said was like this right here, this out here, this is the real Milwaukee. This is the Milwaukee that they don't want to see us all together us all um like gathered from so many different walks of life and us knowing what's going on is fucked up and he's like this is the milwaukee, this is the real milwaukee that they don't see milwaukee is you know like people from outside of it they don't they don't fucking get us like they don't get it and we have a lot of social and political issues that are very important to talk about such mm -hmm. as poverty and segregation and gentrification but you, like where we we overcome those obstacles that the ruling class has has imposed on us and we all come together because we want to see justice and integrity uh sense of community like mm -hmm. that reminds us why we do what we do um, yeah so when he said that it just it just really hit home yeah he's a very wise man yeah that's the beauty oh sorry go ahead 
<laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of PI. And uh, you know, he, he always comes to realize it. Sometimes, you know, being out there, people are um, out there all the time, and sometimes people get pretty worn out. But I always love it when P gives us these beautiful reminders, and he does that. Um, and 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 he's so inviting uh, to so many different things. Okay. I also, he's like <laughs> the beauty of P is like he's a person, one of uh, you know a handful of people that we know from TPR that could unite any communities uh, that are fighting each other, any kind of like forces fighting each other. Um, he can talk to anybody and warm them up. I wasn't sure P wanted me. He, P always looks pissed off, right? We know that. And I didn't. I wasn't sure that he always wanted me to be filming him or be by him. And I just remember. Um, being up front with him one day and always asking kind of like, uh, you know, try to be as polite as possible. Like, is it all right if I, you know, take a picture? He's like, hey, you can come up here anytime you want. You know, anytime. You want. He's like, nothing but love. And then come up, give me a hug. He's like, you don't want to be afraid. <laughs> like, don't want yeah. to be afraid of me at all. And um, and that's the beauty of Pete. He sees the beauty in everybody and he realizes the potential of Milwaukee. And that's kind of the, one of the beautiful things about TPR. And I don't really want to compare him necessarily to any other uh, maybe protest group, but there's a lot of love there and you see these in, in other protest groups but they show the love there is a lot of hugging it's a lot of caring for one another somebody's sick or um uh, anything that's going on there's people delivering food to others ho other houses and uh it's a really strong sense of community totally. makes us want to be strong better people too it does <laughs> it wholeheartedly does it makes you reevaluate your entire lifestyle it makes you reevaluate your entire philosophy of like righteousness in in this world you know like taking care of one another and the power of redistribution you know mm -hmm. like truly really beautiful things um and uh, and I, I was watching uh, your guys uh, trailers and uh been seeing like yeah tpr breaks out into song like they <laughs> it, they really brings the like the melody out like with the chants and stuff and it's just that yeah. synchronicity of so many different people is just so like you know, it's, it's, it's very brave and it's very, um, it's, it's very powerful. Oh, and, uh, and I feel like, you know, it's part of our responsibility to really kind of show those things too. I think um, a lot of it, I, I know what you're referencing, you're referencing a place up in Whitefish Bay when there's a, um, a wonderful pastor up there singing this beautiful song and getting everybody into it. And then also what well, Tosa too, we really wanted, we felt it was like our responsibility, a lot of the reporting that was going on with what Tosa was, um, you know, a, a business had their windows broken. A couple, in a re couple of residents had their windows broken. Not from TPR, just from other people that came um, and did that. Um, but what we wanted to show was that there was people singing and dancing um, and, and these, having these beautiful chants and trying to get their message across to um, 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 my National Guard and to Sheriff's Department, to the police, like, hey, just hear us. We're beautiful people and we're here for that. And that's what we were really trying to show. We show in the trailer and you'll be seeing that in the film. There's nothing but love there. And uh, we're hearing the, the stories wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and quite honestly, we saw really very little destruction of what was told. So it happened. And it's always sad. And it's, it's disappointing. But it was very little. Like what was was not burning down. It, there, there were some places that got, uh, had their windows broken. That's too bad. But the wrong people are being painted as, as the thugs, as the mm. instigators here. There's no violence until the police show up. Um, <laughs> every time, you know, and, and you know, to go off of what you're saying there too, um, I think it was uh, Burlington, you know, Burlington School District. Uh, um, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, there is uh, some school board members down there um, and their big fear was that, you know, somebody said TPR is going to be coming down there and that got the business owners in um, Burlington scared. Like uh, people are talking about boarding up their windows if TPR was coming down. But why? Like uh, TPR doesn't break windows, doesn't do any of these things. And we really find that to be our responsibility to show like, no, that's not true. Right. We're here to, to march peacefully. Yeah. Totally. We you have a megaphone. <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> all, that's all you came here with. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so this is actually a great segue into talking a little bit about uh, the film and the, the series that you're working on. So, um, so volume up that's the that's the series correct that's correct yep sure. that's an ongoing series and uh maddie's still filming for volume up every day i try to get out on the weekends for that and we occasionally get videos up to our youtube channel for that right i think our latest video was from the uh joel acevedo rally a few weeks ago mm. uh, and yeah so every few weeks we try to update um the website update our youtube channel and make sure we're, you know, accurately, accurately getting TPR's actions out there. 
for the world to see. Yeah, right. And then it um, won't stop um, the story of the People's Revolution. That's going to be the documentary on the film, um, how they got organized, how they got started. Wonderful. And it's volume up because everyone has to be listening. So crank yeah. it up was um we originally put them up as like facebook and instagram videos and you know you have to manually click the volume button so you can actually hear what they're saying or else you're just seeing the images but the words are so powerful and important that we wanted to make sure that you know that right was, where you know. where you can't it's impossible to ignore you know if you're ignoring it, you're doing it on purpose because you don't want to be uncomfortable. But yes, world's got to hear it. And then won't stop, as uh, as uh, y'all are saying, is just uh, the notion that TPR is going to keep going and they're going to keep doing this. And not even, you know, no matter the blizzard, the rain, the sleet, the hail, the cops like <laughs> nothing is nothing's gonna stop them from uh from their their mission for justice essentially mm -hmm. exactly right yeah so that being said uh yeah what can we expect uh what uh what, what's your rollout plan looking like great question <laughs> no, it changes every day no we, we're hard at work at it and uh we have a storyline i think you know what you probably see is you know, the opening days um, after George Floyd was killed and then kind of like the evolution and how TPR grew. They're not an organization. They're nothing like that. How they grew as an organic community, just kind of going out and fighting for justice. And then how they get to Wauwatosa. Wauwatosa was never on their list of ever to protest. I don't think they ever had a plan to protest there. What they found out was that there was an officer uh, named Joseph Mensa. They had killed three people. That wasn't open to the public. People did not know that. They knew that Joseph Mensa had killed uh, Antonio Gonzalez and Jay Anderson. And then it was revealed that it was Joseph Mensa that had killed Alvin Cole this last uh, February 2020. And it's pretty rare for a cop to shoot anybody, let alone kill anybody, let alone kill three people. And that really disturbed a lot of the community members, a lot of community members in Wauwatosa and in Milwaukee, which obviously borders Wauwatosa. And a lot of if you live in Milwaukee, you kind of go over to the border and go to Wauwatosa and shop. It's just kind of what you would typically do. And going over there and having an officer there that's a killer, that concerned the community. So they protested there. And Wauwatosa was not prepared for protests. They just weren't ready for that kind of thing. Um, and that's kind of where our film, play, a, lot, a large part of our film, I think, is going to play in Wauwatosa and what's going on with Joseph Mensa. Yeah. God, I... I it's so frustrating to think about like how this serial killer has been let off the hook time and time again. And, mm -hmm. and just the whole thing about like Waukesha picking him up now, like mm -hmm. it's, it's really disheartening. Um, but I'm, but you know, like I said, like I've been saying, like, it's, it's uh, like, I'm really glad that uh, you folks have been out there, like really standing your ground not letting the system intimidate you from documenting this whole thing. Like it's, it's really brave. Uh, it takes a lot of courage. So um, I'm glad you guys have been out there doing the thing. I, I like, I really, really support you guys. And uh, I'm really uh, happy uh, you guys could come onto the show today to share a little bit about your, your story, your journey, and uh, you know, how the movement is, strong it's breathing fire and uh, it's going to keep going up so oh yeah oh, thank you appreciate you yeah, saying that thank you so much for having it's, us of course um great speaking it's yeah i've yeah. seen so many protests but we've just never connected so. right well that's why i enjoy this show because it gives us a chance to like actually um you know uh sit down and uh have a little chat you know uh yeah and I, I hope to keep talking to more and more uh, folks in TPR and, and other affiliated uh, organizations as well. So as we're closing out here, <clears throat> um, I ask everyone the same two questions on the way out. Uh, so Maddie, we'll start with you here. Uh, what keeps you up at night? Oh, as soon as you mentioned um, our friend uh, being tackled by Wauwatosa PD, 
th that just took me back and that that's a big trigger i can't watch that video i um, can't either i can't either <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I was so embarrassed because my screaming is just so much and it's hard to hear. Um, that keeps me up the, the way that they so nonchalantly did what they did to this sweet individual. Um, yes. One of the sweetest people I've met like in mm -hmm. the last year, one, like he, like he's, he's such a kind soul to be around for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I wholeheartedly like, I, I agree. Um, Sean, what keeps you up at night? Mm. Um, yeah, probably frustration for those who don't want to hear the message. Uh, people are out here giving the message and have been for a long time, but also seeing legislators uh, who are not listening to the people's voices either. That is sad. You know, it's less grisly than, the violence that's happening out there, but it's sad because people have their fingers in their ears and they're not listening. It's still a lot of them. I think we have a long ways to go. Common council, like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's almost like being a troll. It's uh, you're actively trying not to hear the, the message that your constituents are trying to have you hear. Right, exactly, yeah. Um, on, a, on a lighter note, uh, the second <laughs> question is, uh, Maddie, what puts you to sleep? Um, the, the love that I see prevailing through all these dark times, um, you know, just being able to go to see our, our protest family and our friends every day and hugging them and, uh, just being with each other in this newfound community, I think is, it's, you know, just a huge support system for me and for us and everyone else in it, I think. So, mm -hmm. yeah. One of, yeah, that's, that puts me to sleep too. Like one thing that has brought me so much joy is every time, like when I've been out at like, um, protests that are like mixes it's a mix of a march and a caravan where folks are also in their vehicles um seeing people hang out of their cars and like blasting music and just feeling the joy and the love like together like amongst each other like that that warms my heart so much um there was so much of that like last summer and, and like just the that feeling of like being in the streets and like feeling the power like that definitely mm -hmm. put me to sleep too. Sean, how about you? How about you? What up? Uh, oh. uh, currently, what's bringing me to sleep is seeing people pull their lives back together after a year being in COVID, and um, people are getting jobs. I haven't seen friends and uh, out there getting their stimulus check, getting jobs again, and and, and kind of being able to take care. of it. it was a rough year. We were around a lot of people that had some really hard times. We had some really hard times through um, 2020 ourselves, but there was a lot of hope going into 2021. So finding some kind of content in the world pulling together a little bit, even small little pieces there helps me sleep in it. Certainly. Um, yeah, it's uh, things are waking up a little bit here now that it's getting warmer. Definitely the days are getting longer. You know, people are energized. Um, I found out last night I'm eligible for the vaccine. So uh, oh, yeah. Your boy is getting the uh, the Fauci ouchie um, <laughs> on Thursday. So <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Hell yeah! Yeah, that's great. Congratulations on that. Hell yeah! I'm very much. Uh, I'm for for one very very excited for uh, live music to hopefully come back in some manifestation safely. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, and hopefully uh, at a later point this year. Um, yeah, I, there's a lot of revolutionary optimism going on. So uh, once again, yeah. thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Hey, it's our pleasure. And check us out at bullhornfilms.com. Awesome. I'll be tagging a link for everyone watching. Uh, uh, you can uh, check out their work, uh, check out the videos, uh, donate, 
uh, shout out to Bullhorn Films. Thank you for watching, Mr. Nice Guy. Hey, thank you for having us. Yeah.